in a way, all the cliches of, of photojournalism is in here as well. You know, you have a broken, you know, a, a, a abandoned looking factory, you have a highway, but then there's something beautiful in the foreground. Like, you know, there's this pool, but it looks kind of like a battle zone almost. You know, it's like the photojournalist uh, dream, you know, a beautiful girl on a beautiful unicorn with lots of rainbow colors here and this drab landscape. I mean, it's like a study in contrast. I mean, yeah, it, it, it's that kind of, it, but it's too good to be true. Hey man, things are happening. Everybody's crazy about this potato thing. Well, I feel everybody must just freak out with it. Everybody now. Everybody now. Freak out with potato. I came across this story about Belen, uh, a small town in North Macedonia, uh, populated by about 40 to 50,000 people, uh, a town that really put itself on the world map as an epicenter of the production of, of fake news. And this idea that that a bunch of teenagers in a faraway place like Veles actually could have a political impact in sort of the most powerful country in the world without even intending to do so. And in a way showed us how vulnerable we are to that. It made me wonder, you know, how easy is it to, to produce synthetic images? Mr. Trump, are the rumors true that you had a stroke? No, 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 look, look, look. They said, I went to Walter Reed Hospital, I had a stroke, I didn't have a stroke. You know, I beat coronavirus, I beat COVID. Alert au deep fake. Une fois le visage collé sur le corps de quelqu'un d'autre, il ne reste qu'à remplacer la voix avec celle d'un imitateur ou de réaliser un montage de discours et on peut faire dire n'importe quoi à n'importe qui. Mr. Trump. Chris, I beat... <coughs> I, I didn't make a single attempt to meet anyone connected to this industry. I, uh, I just walked around town taking pictures of empty spaces that I thought looked like the kind of place where I would have imagined uh, stuff like this to go on. And then I was going to populate those scenes later when I got home with uh, digital avatars and, and 3D models of stuff. I will tell him that his patience with your misadventures has been rewarded with a weapon that will bring a swift end to the rebellion. Ne vous fiez pas aux apparences. Cet acteur nommé Peter Cushing est décédé en 94, mais ça ne l'empêche pas de tenir un des rôles principaux de Star Wars Rogue One, 22 ans après sa mort, animé tel une marionnette par un acteur bien vivant. Traditionnellement réservé à l'industrie du jeu vidéo et du cinéma, la technologie qui permet d'animer des corps virtuels est désormais accessible à presque tous. La captation s'effectue en quelques minutes et les corps scannés dans les moindres détails sont en vente sur Internet. You have kind of absolutely limitless possibilities, right? I mean, you can create whatever you want in these images. I mean, people can be flying around like Superman and uh you know they can be uh riding on dinosaurs around town if you want so <laughs> i think the sort of instinct is to pile it on you know make it really complex pictures and make really amazing stuff happen and uh i realized as i was making them that i all the time had to pull back because in the end i wanted it to look like something that you realistically would get on, on a uh, assignment to photograph something like that. And, and on, a, on a job like that, you don't get so much. I on purpose put a lot of hints in here that was meant to reveal the truth. You know, like the bears. It should really make you wonder when you see picture after picture of, of bears walking around this town. 
in-game photography naît au début des années 2000 grâce au développement des jeux en open world. Certains en profitent alors pour s'aventurer dans ces mondes presque infinis, histoire d'en rapporter des souvenirs. Si initialement les captures d'écran servaient à montrer son score pour impressionner les autres joueurs, elles sont aujourd'hui l'outil privilégié de cette nouvelle forme d'art qui est la photo de jeux vidéo. Je suis, en, je suis en train de faire un reportage en fait. Moi c'est un reportage là que je fais. C'est comme si j'avais un petit gilet euh, presse et puis que voilà, je faisais des photos sauf que, euh, sauf que la convention de Genève n'est pas respectée là puisque <rire> me tire quand même dessus. Sa série sur Fallout 4, commencée en 2017, Elise reprend en photo ses captures d'écran avec un appareil argentique, de manière à obtenir du flou et du grain. Elle altère ses négatifs histoire de créer l'illusion du réel. For example, I'm, I'm standing here. I have uh, different lamps in my office shining light on my face. I can capture all of that. Uh, light coming from all different angles and all the different temperatures and, and intensities. There's a very easy way with a, a small device that's about this big. I capture the, the light that was in the room and then I just put the same light. And then it's almost like magic and it matches up with your picture quite easily. In the beginning, I, I had not planned to have an uh, artificial intelligence computer system write the entire text of the book. Uh, that is something that just happened because I started playing with this technology and I realized, wow, you know, it, it can write easily something that people will believe it's a, a real report. Uh, so it kind of just was like a snowball that was rolling down the mountain. À force d'imiter le cerveau, les machines commencent sérieusement à en avoir dans le ciboulot à tel point que l'algorithme est capable de réaliser ses propres œuvres, comme ici. Après l'impressionnisme ou le cubisme, bienvenue dans l'art généré par les réseaux de neurones artificiels. Si vous feed the artificial intelligence system with uh, all of uh, Shakespeare's uh, works, it will write something that really looks like Shakespeare at the other side. So what I did, I took all the English language articles where journalists had actually traveled to Vellet to report about the fake news producers in Vellet. I didn't write a single word. People have always been able to manipulate photography. You know, uh, people have always been able to write lies when they are writing a piece of text. You know, this is, this is not a new thing. Uh, people have been doing that throughout the history of photography. Uh, the difference is that now we get to a point when, when this can be automated. And you, you, we will just have to spend enormous amount of energy sorting through all of this and trying to decode what is legitimate, what is not, what is the sources, And we can already see now that we today have a huge problem with that. And, and that problem is simply uh, absolutely not going away. I was uh, I'm born in 1977, so I was about 12, 13 years old when the Iron Curtain fell. And just before I was 20 years old. Uh, I moved to a small town in, in Russia called Birubijan. I was working a lot in these kind of unrecognized republics, you know, people who live in, in a way, countries that don't even exist. Countries like uh, Transnistria and Abkhazia, these kind of places. And I was fascinated with how people deal with these kind of gray zones, you know, of, of, you know they're, they're kind of like off the official grid, but they have to make a life out of it and invent some it is so much about you know invention of a of a common narrative about history it's about um, all these things and these are themes that have stuck with me in 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 various ways um, uh, throughout my career 
for example, in my last uh, project before this, uh, the last testament, uh, which was about the many men who claimed to be Jesus Christ. <laughs> In a way, it's it's all part of one story about how we as people try to organize the chaos around us, right? Yes. En 2016, le village est devenu la Mecque des fake news. Ce qui était un centre industriel de l'ancienne Yougoslavie abrite maintenant une zone artisanale spécialisée dans l'export de fausses nouvelles à destination des Américains les plus naïfs. I didn't want to meet anyone. I stayed in my hotel room. I had dinner sort of way off. I found restaurant way off the main path, you know. Um, and um, I. Um, Yeah, I, I tried to stay to myself, and and I felt I felt you know at that point this this kind of this lie had gone quite far. I bought Chloe from a company that sells uh, fake uh, social media profiles. She became quite well connected throughout the summer. You know, photo editors, photographic colleagues, curators of museums, stuff like that. So she was waiting for the right moment when. I thought, okay, it's time to help people see what's the problem. Is. A lot of media was writing about this uh, event. You know, lot, you know, Le Monde, uh, Figaro. Uh, at one point, Wired magazine in in America wrote about this. A big, big, long article. The moment the Wired piece came out, another article came out in another publication called texasnewstoday.com. And I thought, oh, this is great. They're writing about this issue even in the regional press in America. It means, you know, I'm su successful at making all this debate. Uh, and then I started reading that article in texasnewstoday.com. And I, I realized, It was a copy. It was kind of a rewritten copy of the Wired article. It was a fake news website that was run from India. So it's like a complete full circle. <laughs> so I was very excited when I found this. I was very, very pleased.